This is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. God bless each and every one of you, and welcome to the New Harvest Midday Inspirational Mealtime. And oh, indeed, we have been having quite an encounter with God's Word, as the Lord is disclosing to us all that we have going for us, because the Scripture declares that in Him, Jesus Christ, dwelleth the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. So if we have embraced Jesus, we have embraced God the Father, we have embraced God the Son, we have embraced God the Holy Spirit, and we have been studying the activity of the Holy Spirit through our study in the book of Acts. And so I just got excited with my little introduction today. But let's ask God's blessings upon this midday meal time that God will sanctify this meal, and that God will enrich our understanding and appreciation for all that we have going for us through the work of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this meal time. We thank you for allowing us to sit together and to partake of your truth and to learn what your word has made available to us and through the knowledge of truth that the Holy Spirit is doing great work in our midst. We just must yield to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to have full control. And if the Holy Spirit is in full control, then all is well. So bless everyone under the sound of my voice. And grant each of us, O oh God, answered prayers. Grant us the grace to walk through whatever our circumstances are. And then God grant us victory to celebrate through testimony that great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Bless us one and bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless each and every one of you. We are excited because we have been studying the, the activity of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. And coming out of that, having looked at what the Holy Spirit began through the ministry of Jesus Christ, and then Jesus was ascended, and then he left instructions for his disciples to go to the upper room. 120 were gathered. The Holy Spirit was given. The church was birthed. And then Peter stood up. And through the practically the first half of the book of Acts, we see Peter leading in the ministry of the church, being led by the Holy Spirit and the activity of the Holy Spirit. Then the second half, we see Paul, who was an enemy of the church, now rise up and become a leader in the church of Jesus Christ. And so the book of Acts ends with Paul going to Rome. And that was his assignment. Then we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit, that is to produce the fruit of the Spirit. There are nine virtues of the fruit of the Spirit. They're not nine fruits. They're nine virtues in the fruit of the Spirit. And that allows us to have the character of Jesus Christ. That allows us to, to literally walk in the personality of who God is. And therefore, we celebrate the fact that if we yield to the Holy Spirit, He produces His virtue in us. Now we're looking at the gifts of the Spirit. Yesterday, we said the gifts of the Spirit, taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 11. We identified nine gifts of the Spirit. There are more. But in Paul addressing Corinthians, he addressed here in 1 Corinthians nine gifts. And there were four highlights that we made yesterday. The gifts of the Spirit are the work of unity within the Godhead. So we see God the Father at work, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we want to be real clear about that. The Holy Spirit gives those gifts as He wills. But it is, it is the power of God that in energizes these gifts. But it is Jesus Christ, the Lord, who directs the gifts. So it's real, real, real interesting to understand how the Godhead works together to ensure that the gifts of the Spirit are operative within the church of Jesus Christ. The second highlight, there exists 
a division of the gifts of the Spirit that are revelatory mind gifts. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. We'll talk more about that today. Then three, there exists a division of the gifts of the Spirit that are inspirational and vocal gifts. Prophecy, divers of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And four, there exists a division of the gifts of the Spirit that are working gifts for divine performance, healing, miracles, and discerning of spirits. So now let's get into our lesson today, the revelatory mind gifts. The revelatory mind gift. You hear that word revelation, the revelatory mind gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 through 11. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one in the self same Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will, as the Holy Spirit wills. 1 Corinthians 12, 8a. For to one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom. For to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. We'll stop there. Highlight number one. Here we go. The word of wisdom is a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to grasp and apply the deep insights of God for living. That's the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. It's a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to grasp and apply. That's the key word here. To apply the deep insights of God for living. It's to tell me how to do. It's to tell me how to do what God has disclosed. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. And so it's the deep things of God where we find the how-tos in the wisdom of God. So the wisdom of God tells us what to do in a given situation. Insight number one. Whereas the limited human mind reasons the ideal means to resolve a problem. That's just human nature. We look at a problem and we reason, we rationalize within ourselves, how should I handle this? But the omniscient Holy Spirit, that means all-knowingness of God, the omniscient Holy Spirit identifies the righteous means to resolve a problem that fits within the perfect plan of God. So the Holy Spirit doesn't just look for a means or just look for a way the Holy Spirit looks for the righteous way, the correct way, the right way that lines up with the perfect plan and will of God. Psalms 23, and we focus on 3b. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so there, there, is, there is a way that is righteous. And therefore, the wisdom of God leads us into the righteous strategy for a given situation. Tip number one. Tip number one. We're talking about the word of wisdom. Let's remember the gift of wisdom is seen through the eyes of God who guides our path. So the Lord doesn't just say, well, he did it that way, you do it that way. The Lord doesn't just say that's what the majority are doing, you do it. No, the Holy Spirit guides us in what is righteous in the eyes of God, the steps of the Lord that are ordered for us in a given situation. That is a word of wisdom. This is what you do in this situation. Psalms 32 and 8, the Lord says to the psalmist, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. That's wisdom. And beloveds, we can have an intimate relationship with God that God will intimately hold our hand and walk us through. The Bible says that the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. And God will show us the righteous way that we are to walk 
in a given situation. Some folk go by the opinions of others. I'd rather go by the omniscience, the wisdom, the deep things of God because it will always line up with his will. And where his will is, that's where his glory is. Let the church say amen. The wisdom of God. Sometimes the wisdom of God will say, hold your peace. You may know something, but the Holy Spirit will say, it's not time for you to speak. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will say, it's time for you to speak up. This is the wisdom of God. This is his righteousness in a given situation. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you to act accordingly, to give in a situation. And other times the Holy Spirit may say, hold back. And we get in trouble when we don't consult the Holy Spirit, when we act on our own rather than to ask God to lead and guide us into all truth and into all righteousness. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I will focus on B of that verse. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. The same spirit that gives wisdom is the same spirit that gives a word of knowledge. Highlight number two. Highlight number two. The word of knowledge is a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to disclose essential facts and unknown information about the plans of God and the plans of men. That's right. We're talking about divine intel, divine intelligence. The word of knowledge is a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to disclose essential facts and unknown information about the plans of God and plans of men. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 through 12. I'm going to read this from the Message Bible because I think it's very, very clear. And this deals with none other than the prophet Elisha. But listen to this. One time when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, after consulting with his officers, he said, at such and such a place, I want an ambush set, an ambush set against the army of Israel. The holy man, that's Elisha, sent a message to the king of Israel. And this is what the message was. Watch out when you're passing this place, because Aram have set an ambush there. Elisha was dealing with a word of knowledge. So the king of Israel sent word concerning the place of which the holy man, Elisha, had warned him. This kind of thing happened all the time. Elisha kept getting a word of knowledge, and he kept sharing it with the king of Israel. And it kept working to the king of Israel's favor. The king of Aaron was furious because every time he would set up an ambush that the king of Israel would avoid it because he got a word of knowledge from Elisha. And so the king of Aaron was furious over all this. He called his officers together and said, Tell me, who is leaking information to the king of Israel? There's no way he would know to avoid the ambush except somebody within these ranks are telling him, Who is the spy in our ranks? But one of his men said, No, my master, dear king, It's not any of us. It's Elisha, the prophet in Israel. He tells the king of Israel, everything you say, even what you whisper in your bedroom. Beloveds, you don't have to spy anybody out. If God is operating with the word of knowledge, God will give you intel that's directly from God himself. Insight number two. Whereas some information is commonly known, and the word of knowledge is not common known information, whereas some information is commonly known and obtained and shared, the gift of the word of knowledge is divinely obtained information and secrets otherwise unknown to man. So I want us to be real clear. I want us to be real clear here that the word of knowledge is not humanly obtained. It's not something you heard because you were eavesdropping. It's not something somebody called you and whispered in your ear and said, I just want you to know this. No, a word of knowledge is divinely obtained. God will allow 
through the Holy Spirit for us to be able to have that insight, that revelation, just as though we were right there to hear it spoken. Acts 5, verse 3 through 4. Let's look at the word of knowledge operating in the early church. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Remember when Ananias and his wife were pretending that they had sold the land like Barnabas did and like others had done and they had gave the total profits over to the church? They weren't required to do that, but they were trying to be deceitful. They were trying to pretend they were giving everything so they could be honored like Barnabas was honored. And this is what Peter said to Ananias. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? It was yours to give whatever you wanted to give. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Peter had a word of knowledge. Here's our takeaway. Tip number two. Glory be to God. Let's remember the all-knowingness, the omniscience of God through the gift of the word of knowledge reveals, discloses, and makes known the deep truths of God and the hidden plans of man. So not only will the word of knowledge give us insight into the heart of God, the secrets of God that are not known to others. But listen, the word of knowledge will also disclose the secrets of men. And God, through this gift, chooses to unveil information just so that we can know what would have been secret to us. God will do that. Now remember we said on yesterday that you don't have to individually have that gift but the gift exists within the body of Christ and so the body of Christ has got to be unified so that the benefit of the gifts flow freely throughout the body and that's why when there's a tendency for relationships to break up I'm not talking about when someone is in sin and I'm not talking about something like that but I'm saying when there's disappointment or feelings of hurt. And even if somebody's in sin, we need to pray for God to restore them. We need to pray for God to give them a change of heart. Why? Because if they belong in the body of Christ, they have a gift and that gift is needed. That's why it was given by the Holy Spirit. So that gift could operate within the body of Christ. And so we've got to learn how to get along. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't have to have coffee and tea together every day. We don't have to go to vacation together with one another. We don't have to do all that. But we do have to operate in a level of unity and peace so that the gift that we have can flow freely through the body and the gift that others operate by can flow freely through the body of Christ. I just wanted to drive that point home. Matthew 16 Verses 16 through 17. Let's look at a word of knowledge. And Simon Peter answered Jesus and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Remember Jesus asked, Who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him. And Jesus answered and said unto Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, son of John, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So the Father energized that gift by the Holy Spirit so that Peter, his eyes opened up and he knew who Jesus was. And he answered the question, not because he was smart, not because he just knew everything, but because the Holy Spirit unveiled it. His heart was open. And the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And the Holy Spirit unveiled information that Peter otherwise would not know. Now listen, you can have head knowledge, 
But having head knowledge is not the same as having a heart revelation. Oh, somebody say hallelujah to that. You've got to have a heart revelation to what you know in your head. And that's why this is a mind gift. But the Holy Spirit will then begin to teach and begin to turn the lights on. And all of a sudden, you'll have a light bulb moment. And that's when the Spirit just unveils. The Spirit will give information that we did not have. Information about God. Information about doctrine. Information about truth. Information about the how the Spirit of God is working. The Holy Spirit will do that. And the Holy Spirit will take head knowledge and give us heart revelation. And that's where conviction comes. And nobody can take that from you. When God gives it to you, can't nobody take it from you. 1 Corinthians 12, 10c. 1 Corinthians 12, 10c. To another discerning of spirits. These are the gifts, the mind gifts, the revelatory gifts given to a believer. To another discerning of spirits. Highlight number three. Highlight number three. The discerning of spirits is a revelatory mind gift. Revelatory. It's revelation. It's a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to supernaturally detect the realms of spirits, both good or evil, involved in specific works, activities, and events. So in other words, something may happen, an activity may take place, an event may take place, Somebody may act a certain way and you're trying to figure out, well, where did that come from? Or is that of God or is that not of God? Is that of God or is that of them? Is that of the enemy? Well, that's what the discerning of spirits is all about. It is, it is to allow us, listen, it is the discerning of spirits. And this spirits is not capital S because it doesn't have to be the spirit of God. This could very well be the spirit of the enemy. It could be the spirit of the flesh. The discerning of spirits is a revelatory mind gift given by the Holy Spirit to supernaturally detect the realms of spirit, both good or evil, involved in specific works, activities, or and events. So somebody could be smiling and you discern that this is the work of the enemy. And, and, and based upon just discerning of spirits. And therefore, the person can't fool you. They can't deceive you. And you can know whether or not they're operating out of sincerity or they're operating out of deceit. Matthews 9, look at verses 1 through 4. Look at this. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him, they brought to Jesus a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of a palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. So Jesus is doing a work of ministry. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, that's the key here, certain of the scribes that were present, to see Jesus minister, said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. They're talking about Jesus. They are accusing Jesus of blasphemy, that he is forgiving this man of sin. What right of he to do that? And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? Jesus discerned the spirit that was operating in these scribes. And he called it out. They said it within themselves. And yet Jesus heard it in the spirit. Good Lord. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I remember when I was um, in the hospital after my accident, after 2,400 pounds of sheetrock fell on me. And I was at the hospital by ambulance before my wife or my mother, or father or family or the pastor, any of them had arrived. And there I was there. And the doctor said to me, you are hemorrhaging. We've got to amputate your right leg. Sign your name. So we need to do this immediately, lest you're going to die. 
And as they were saying, they were handing me the, 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 the sheet of authorization to sign it. I heard in my spirit, the Holy Ghost say, not so, not so. The Holy Spirit was not only discerning that the, the, that the information they were giving me was incorrect, but that the enemy was using their lack of information, of correct information, to deceive me. So it was the work of the enemy. And I'm not calling the doctors the enemy because they only know what they know. But the Holy Spirit said in me, not so, not so. You don't have to have that leg amputated. Insight number three, I praise God, I heard the Holy Spirit. I praise God, the Holy Spirit discerned in me that this is not truth, don't receive it. Insight number three, whereas some deceitfully camouflage their real motivation and intent, the Holy Spirit discerns the hearts to reveal the true spirit operating in the hearts of individuals. Oh, won't he do it? Acts 5, verse 7 through 9. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, when Ananias' wife, not knowing what was done, came in. So her husband had died. She didn't know it. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. She lied. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that you have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Peter discerned she was lying. Tip number three, you can't fool the Holy Spirit. Tip number three, let's remember Every believer through divine wisdom can determine good from evil, while some are especially gifted to discern and identify the spiritual source at work. Every believer has the ability to discern, but some are gifted to discern where others would miss it. There are some who not only can know whether it's good or evil, they can even call the name of the spirit that is at work. And that's because they're gifted of the Holy Spirit with the discerning of spirits. So listen, we, we, we've got to know this. Let every believer through divine wisdom can determine good from evil. We all can do it. If we know the word of God, if we have a relationship with God, if we know the, 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 the scriptures, then we, we, can, we, we can determine. We can determine whether this is of truth or not. But if you're gifted with the discerning of spirits, the Holy Spirit will give you a supernatural endowment to go to the source and know exactly what we're working with. 1 John 4, 1 tells us, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many just go by what people say. You better discern. You better know indeed if this is of God. And I'm not saying going around now as a detective and you're trying to now trying to see inside of everybody. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about walking in the spirit and the spirit will guide and lead us. Here's our final takeaway. The revelatory mind gifts divinely provides essential information through the word of knowledge, essential strategies through the word of wisdom and essential spirit detection through discerning of spirits enabling the work of of the spirit. Somebody say hallelujah. God doesn't want us walking around guessing. God doesn't want us walking around in uncertainty. And so we need to have a relationship with God and with one another such that we can be on the button every time and we can know. And the Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So let's not walk around trying to act like we know everything. Let's Seek the Lord in prayer and ask God to give us access to divinely obtained knowledge, to divinely obtain wisdom and the discerning of spirits. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we glorify you that you are giving us a toolbox and all these tools are available to us to use that we may walk in the light and not in darkness. Now grant us the discipline to walk close with thee and to walk close with one another and to know God for ourselves and to admit when we're wrong 
and to acknowledge that God is always right. Show us the way that we can walk in it. And we give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless every one of you. Go over this lesson again. Listen to it again. And get these insights so that you can walk away with an understanding of the mind, the revelatory mind gifts. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And we will see you on tomorrow as we will continue our midday inspirational mealtime. In Jesus' name, be blessed of the Lord.